Hello, my name is Daryl Vilbrun, class of 2021. I'm a liberal studies major and I have the audacity to become an entrepreneur and real estate mogul. It is an honor to introduce the special tribute to the late coach John Cheney. When he got to Cheney, he loved being at Cheney because he, he knew that the kids that were going to Cheney, uh, they were a lot of underprivileged kids. Most of the kids couldn't afford, uh, afford to go to college. So he, he was able to give them scholarships. And the most important thing that he, he stressed was education. And the reason why he stressed education, because that was one of the keys to get you out of po poverty. And he, you know, he felt that if the kid can get an un understanding of, of going to college, getting a good education, that means getting a better job. So he took those in particulars where kids had to listen. And if you didn't listen to what he had to say, just like when I'm at home, if I don't listen, you know, he's gonna smack me upside my head. You, you've been a witness to that, you know, so. Uh, but he's always, uh, he's always been a person that, that stressed discipline. Discipline in your life, discipline in your household. And we got back to the locker room and we thought Coach was going to come down on us, you know, because we lost the game by 20. But he came in and he was happy. He said, guys, I'm so proud of y'all because y'all almost played the perfect game. He said, we had one turnover in 40 minutes. I'm going to hang this statue in the locker room because this is the closest we ever came to playing a perfect game. And that's how much he felt about turning the ball over because his philosophy was, if you don't turn the ball over, you can win the game regardless of what. The only reason why we lost that game is because Green Bay had 47 foul shots and we had seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do it. And I talked to Andrew Field the other day. Rather, we had the, uh, the home going search for Coach. He said, he said, sure, do you remember Coach told us because you used to have problems getting past that Elite Eight. He said, y'all win this game for me, I'll get y'all a championship. And he did. And it go back to what Bird said in his, in his uh, comments, promise, promise made a promise kept. Well, being a good bad guy because he number was one. A <laughs> I was a good in training because they had yeah. the late Gerald Mills and, and uh, Gilbert Simons Simon was yeah. the original goons. I was in training. And, um, but I did more things than, than the goons. But the goal's job was just to come in and whoever may be hot or whatever, just to take that hard foul. It's trying to intimidate, like I was I alluded to a little early. So again, they wore that, that it was like a badge of honor. But you we know, called it wasn't. In to come in because when, when you came in the game, the players already knew what was getting ready to happen. Somebody's getting ready to get jacked up. It wasn't necessarily like it was something that was planned. Like Shook said, Arthur Stone said, everyone had a particular role. And one of the coaches' philosophy was find a way to win. Find a way to win in all situations. So no matter whoever we went up against, taking into account that, you know, 30 games, we may have played five games here on campus. We played most of our games away. So we always had to go into the Lions' den and hostile play against a hostile environment. So we always had to find a way to win. And like Arthur Stone said, certain guys had certain roles and you can call it a goon or finding a way to win which wasn't something dirty that, you know, we did what we had to do to get to the next level. Uh, and we always had coaches support with that and uh, he held us accountable for it. You know, he wouldn't allow us to play as easy as a razzle-dazzle basketball. We were a disciplined team, we were high power scoring, and we played defense. And like Keith Johnson said, we didn't turn the ball over. You know, they took that goon thing out of proportion, way out of proportion. Way out of proportion. I felt that when coach, when the game got to a point where the refs weren't being fair, if the ref wasn't going to take care of the situation, he wanted us to do it on the court. But it wasn't like go out and injure somebody, you know. And that situation with St. Joe, he said, he called him a goon, but in his, perspective, he was saying that at that point, the game was getting out of hand and 
that guy knew it was time for him to get the game back in order. You know, he was always trying to teach us self-control, and God was coming from rough backgrounds, including myself, you know. But he talked to me a lot about basketball, but before that he talked about, you know, respect, knowing the game, being intelligent, and all this working together, you know what I mean, on the same page. And, you know, it's, it's easier for them coaches to coach guys with A, A, A and B grades, great background. It's hard, but it's a little easier. But then you got kids coming from backgrounds of broken hearts, broken homes, and then you try to mend them, right? And that's team together. You bring the family together. So, uh, like myself, I come from a broken family, you know, team together. We go way back, so when we would reach back to the guys who come visit the game on homecoming, it meant a lot. I think uh, the main focus of coach was family, team together, love, self-control, and the fact that don't forget where you came from. You can't forget the people before. A lot of, a lot of times during his, uh, when he started coaching, he always lectured before. They wouldn't even touch a, touch a basketball. They would, he would lecture for 30 to an hour. Some of the kids were like, when are we going to when are we going to practice? When are we going to shoot? Well, he set down rules. Make sure the rules were clear. He put out, he made sure the discipline was there. So they know what to expect. One of the things that I noticed when he was coaching is that he's always thinking out of, out of the box. Meaning that he would have practice with the, uh, with the women's team, with Vivian Stringer's team. Now who does that? I don't know, I heard any other coaches do that. But they would practice together. They would run like games together with a clock. And, uh, there's a lot of things that uh, Daddy would do out of the box. But you know, he's, he's been a great dad. I love him. I miss him. John Cheney. Oh, wow. What can, what can I say? I, I, I spent a lot of time trying to find the words to complete sentences. I must have done this maybe 50, 60 times and still can't find the words to explain who he was as a person and who he was as a friend. And I really know that he is bigger than life. Uh, but the greatest thing about him is he was always very, very, very sincere about his players, his passion, his, um, the importance of getting an education. And so, yeah, that's, that's Cheney, Cheney University. Cheney University that gave hope to the hopeless and gave an opportunity for all of us you know, to rise above where we came from. And actually, for some time, I could honestly believe that Cheney University name came from John Cheney. He was the perfect person, the perfect person to represent Cheney University. Cheney University is that university that will never let you down, that will always stick by you. And that was Coach Cheney. Uh, I promise you that, you know, all these years, you know, he, he was a saying, and the players and the people that have been associated with him know this. They say that imitation is the finest form of flattery. Well, I imitated Coach Cheney from day one. I can't thank him enough and, and thank so many people that have been a part of his life, part of my life, uh, to have given me the greatest pleasure of my life. I, I really and truly have never made a, a basketball decision without ever contacting him. I would always contact him first, and that's, and that's true. More, more recently, when he uh, celebrated his birthday, and uh, when I called him, he said, you know, how many turnovers did you have? And I said, well, what are you talking about? How many turnovers did I have? And he said, you know, you know how many turnovers I have, you just don't want to admit it. You know, now that you've gone down to, to Rutgers and, 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 and in Iowa, you started running and, you know, doing this and doing that, but you know how I taught you. And I just smiled, because he did. He taught me well. 
you know, and, and so much so that I would joke and say, you know what, you're the only person that I know that have taken two people into the Naismith Hall of Fame. I mean, how much bigger can it be? And honestly, when, when Dr. Wade Wilson, who used to come to uh, Coach Cheney and my practice, would sit there and smile, and, and he said, you know what, I bet there's no place on the face of the earth that they have a men and women's basketball team practicing together. And that's true. I talked to one of my players the other day and, and, and she was saying, you know what, man, you know what, you would lecture sometimes, Coach Cheney would lecture sometimes, but it was the men and the women that were to get together. And, and, and he taught us, you know, and he taught them and us how we can share the stage of basketball because it's nothing but a transformative movement toward life. And he taught us how we can do special things together. Coach Cheney always said, as it referred to the opportunity to get an education and his importance to that, and that's every, every the players would go to class every single day. Don't You don't miss a class for anything. And when he said, you know, you don't raise the ceiling without raising the floor. And that was so true. And so I'm, I'm sure that Coach Cheney's dying wish would, been, would have been, as we discussed so many times, you know, the opportunity for, for our young people to get an education, to go on to take a productive position in life and to be somebody because you are somebody. And I thank Cheney University, Dr. Wilson, Coach Cheney, you know, from the bottom of my heart, I, I could not have asked for more. And I appreciate the opportunity to have been, even been a part of Cheney University. And I know that, that I would just be only so, pr so proud um, just to say that, you know, that I was working alongside this legendary man that has given so much to our sport, so much to humanity. And it is a lesson that everyone, everyone, honestly, should, should follow and understand that this was about love and, and the love that I found at Cheney, uh, the respect that I found at Cheney, and the way that the players relate, related then and relate now, even now. Once you are a Cheneyite, believe me, you are always a member of the Cheney family. And so, much like Mark Macon said at, at Coach Cheney's funeral, you know, we would say, he would say the word team, and then we as a team and a group of people said together, and Coach would say team and together, team together. Uh, it was only fitting because all of what we were and all of what I am, I owe to this special man